Hey everyone, welcome back to Callie and Beans Books. I'm Callie and today I am doing a slightly overdue April wrap up. I realize that it's the middle of May, but I then also realized checking our schedule that I never actually did one of these for April. So, better late than never, but I'm gonna do it. So, I read a total of 15 books in the month of April, so pretty on par with what I've been doing for the most part of 2021. So the first book that I read in the month of April was A Touch of Ruin by Scarlett St. Clair. This is the second book in the A Touch of Darkness or the Hades and Persephone saga, which is an adult romance series following a very modern day Hades and Persephone love story. So as this is book two, I'm obviously not gonna go into too much detail. I did give this four stars just for the sole entertainment factor. With books like this and from Blood and Ash and romance novels, I'm not reading it for the amazing world, for the literature. I'm reading it for enjoyment factor because that's what these books are. They're a good in-between between all my high fantasy books to just sit back and enjoy and binge a good smutty romance. I do love the introduction to all the Greek gods and getting that lore within and weaved through this entire story. I think that's so well done. Like I said, I gave this four stars. The thing that got me with this sequel is Persephone is really a lot more whiny in this one than the first book. I mean, we're definitely seeing her grow and mature with Hades, but I plan on reading Hades' perspective of this series soon. Um, and I'm hoping to like that one a lot more than this one. Up next is just a reread that I've been doing and um, that is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Mass. I've been rereading or I guess re-listening to the series. Queen of Shadows is still by far my favorite in the entire series besides Kingdom of Ash. Um, cause Kingdom of Ash is a finale. Um, so I don't really count those when it comes to a favorite. Uh, Queen of Shadows is just pure chaos and I live for it. The next book that I ended up picking up is Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett. And I gave this three stars, mainly because to me the pacing was all over the place. This story follows a thief who is almost forced slash commissioned to try and find this relic. And when they awaken this relic who ends up becoming, he's like a fae, it leads them on this trek to find the other six fae relics. And that's kind of the whole story is you're just kind of traveling, finding the relics and the owner of the relics. Cause each one leads you to the next one. I don't know. That's, I only gave this three stars. It was very confusing to follow and the pacing was all over the place. And I did not care for the main character. Now, I swear like a sailor and I love seeing swear words in my books. This had so many random like swear words. Some of them were made sense, but they were just like randomly thrown into sentences. Like just for that shock factor of, oh, this is technically YA, but they're say they're dropping so many F-bombs. So that was a little jarring. I do say I liked the aspect of how each puzzle piece had to find the next puzzle piece. I thought that was really an interesting take and a very unique take on that lost treasure kind of trope in stories. But the way the world worked was so confusing. And even as I read the end of the book, I didn't really understand the point. I don't know, it, this, it, it almost feels unfinished. Like it just, ended like there was no resolution it felt like and that was a bit annoying so not my favorite book but I definitely see that there's a lot of potential uh with the authors up next I picked up Grave Maidens by Kelly Kuhn I gave this two stars um I really loved the concept the concept of this book is it is two girls two sisters 
And one is chosen to be a grave maiden, which basically means that when the pharaoh or emperor dies, these, I think it's four or five women have been chosen to go into his tomb to accompany him to the next life, basically meaning that they will be killed with him when he dies. They are his wives in the next life. So we followed the sister of a girl who's been chosen as a grave maiden trying to prevent that from happening. And the thing is, is this is like a very prestigious title to be called a grave maiden. So the sister was very like, I don't want to be rescued. And I feel like the main character had this sense of entitlement that came out of nowhere. Like she was just that, I know what's best. You be quiet and shut your face. She also treated this guy who was so respectful of her. She treated him like crap and I didn't appreciate it. There was because what I assumed was going to end up happening was he felt entitled to her. Like, there was this weird love interest. But he was like, if you're not into it, that's cool. But I want you to know I like you. And she was just a bitch to him the entire time. And he was still like, I love you. And I'm like, this is weird and very forced. I'm not a fan. I don't know. I just, I couldn't like the main character. And since it was in her perspective... I just rushed through this book because I just didn't want to listen to her anymore. She was annoying. She, her warped sense of entitlement just bothered the crap out of me. Like, don't get me wrong. I get it. Like, I get where she was coming from. That she didn't want her sister to get killed and all of that. But at the same time, it just... She did so many other things to make things a million times worse. Like, she just did things because she thought they were the right thing. And just made things every, just everything a million times worse. And it was annoying. I wasn't a fan. Up next, I picked up The Diviners by Libba Bray. This book has been sitting on my shelves for so long. Now, I went into The Diviners thinking, because a lot of people say that if you like Doctor Who, if you like Sherlock, those kinds of TV shows, you'll like The Diviners. So I thought there was gonna be like time travel heists and a lot of really cool things. It was a mystery set in the 1920s with some supernatural elements. That's what this was. So I think I went into this with much higher expectations than I probably should have. So I gave this three stars. The atmosphere was very cool. I loved the 1920s New York. That was really fun. Even the verbiage that the characters were using was very 1920s. And I enjoyed that. However, this book needed to be about this long. This was so long. And nothing happened in between. We got this mystery or whatever in between. And it just... The mystery was fine. It was dragged out way too long. This needed to be like 250 pages. 300 pages shorter than it actually was. And I think that's why I didn't care for it as much. There was just way too much fluff. And I get that we were trying to get to know our characters and all of that. But it, it was almost too in-depth. Like, this is a four book series, I don't really, and they're all this long, so we'll see if I decide to finish this. I'm supposed to be starting Lair of Dreams pretty soon, so we'll, we'll see how I feel. I do, as the book ended, I really enjoyed the direction that I'm pretty sure that this is gonna take. So I am excited to get into the next couple of books, but I'm just hoping there's so much less fluff. Because if there's more fluff, I'm gonna give it up, because I don't, I just want a good mystery. Like, I don't care about the fluff at all. The next book that I ended up picking up is Mirage by Somea Duad. This book took me by surprise. I thought this was gonna be set in a very Aladdin-esque kind of desert city. No, this takes place in space with an Arabian society, which is so cool and so unique. So we're following this girl who is picked up because she looks exactly like their princess. She's called a different term, but she's basically the princess. So she ends up becoming the princess's body double. And this princess is hated, which is why she needed a body double. And even our main character hates the princess because part of her country is being suppressed, or not even her country, it's her planet 
is being suppressed and they're going through a famine and a drought and all these problems that this planet or interplanetary system that this princess is a part of is very conquering. So they're not very well liked with a few planets. What I really enjoyed about this is our main character wasn't that perfect heroine. She, whereas where a lot of these heroines are thrown into their situation and they just take it and run, our main character was very like, why am I here? I don't want to do this. This sucks. <laughs> like, I just want to go home. And I thought that was really realistic and I was able to connect with her and I was loving her entire story. So when there's like these rebellion things that start to come up, she ends up getting really torn because she starts to grow close to this princess and actually get to know her as a person. But at the same time, she has this loyalty to her planet. So the rebellion is very promising to her and she gets very torn. And it's just, it was so fascinating. And I think this is a very, very underrated book. And I highly recommend you read this if you like anything Arabian inspired. The next book that I ended up picking up ended up becoming my favorite book for the month of April and that was The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This book, um, I heard nothing but good things and I finally picked it up to see what the hype was all about and it did not disappoint even a little. This book was so beautiful and gut-wrenching. I sobbed my way through the last hundred pages of this, of this book. It was so good. So we're following this guy, this guy Linus, who basically works for Magical CPS. And he's very just get the job done, do it, you know, that he didn't make connections. But when he sent to this orphanage, he meets the caretaker and he starts to connect and get to know these children. And the reason he's sent to this orphanage is one of the children is the child, as a six-year-old child of the devil. So that's a whole thing, which is so interesting. And some of the other characters, the children especially, are so dynamic and so well done, which I think is really hard to get capture in a novel is personalities and getting you to fall in love with these children for what they are, they're children. And I loved each had their own individual personality and their own little spunk like all children do. And it was just so good. And I, I highly recommend this book. It's, it's just beautiful and magical and I loved every second of it. I forgot to give it the star rating. I gave this five stars. Up next, I picked up the sil the, the, the Silvered Serpents by Roshni Chachki. This is book two in the Gilded Wolves series, which I fell in love with. It is a very cool 1800 steampunk national treasure kind of book. And this one, it kept it going. And I think the thing that I love about this, besides the 1800 steampunk national treasure aspect of it, which is so much fun and so cool, the characters are so well done. They're diverse, they have depth, they're dynamic. They're just fantastic. And I loved one less than the first book in this one, but the rest of them I still fell in love with and I loved even more in this book. They're just so intriguing to follow. And it's just, I love the heist. This one had a very wintry feel. We were in Russia for most of this book, opposed to Paris, which we were in the first book. So I did love how we've traveled and we got to expand this world of this Babel society. And it was just so well done. And I need the third book, which comes out, I think, later this year. I ended up giving Silvered Serpent four stars because it was just, it was a good time. The next book that I ended up picking up was a middle grade book. And that was Witchwood by Tahara Mafi. This is the second book in the Furthermore duology slash series. Not really sure. <laughs> As of right now, it's a duology. And in this, it's a, it's a weird, complex children's story, I guess. I gave it three stars. It was just weird and gross to me. We're following this girl whose job is to clean the dead so that they can travel to the underworld. And we follow our main characters from book one, trying to help her. She's very reluctant to accept help. And a bunch of other things happen. So it's a weird thing. I, I kept getting lost. I kept getting bored. 
I just didn't find it interesting. I found it gross and annoying. So I only gave it three stars. The concept itself was very interesting. The ending was very cute. But yeah, it was, it, I don't think this type of storytelling is for me. Up next, I uh, read Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I gave this four and a half stars. This was such a fun romance novel. We're following Chloe Brown obviously, who has a physical disability and she is tired of it taking over her life. So she makes a list to get a life. And in that, she did not plan to start to fall for her landlord slash maintenance man. And we're also following our maintenance man, Red, who just wants to get back into his art and is really only using this as a means to make money and help a friend at the same time, let alone did he know he would fall for the sassy tenant. And we just follow them throughout this entire story. It's so cute. It's a quick read. And it's just everything that I could ever want from a romance novel. It's just, it had everything. It had good smut, it had good romance. The tropes that were used within the story were not miscommunication or the lying or those kind of tropes that I see in romance novels. It was actual real life issues that they sat down and talked about, which I loved and it made them very realistic, which made me enjoy it even more. Up next, I picked up Ice Like Fire by Sarah Roche. I ended up giving this three and a half stars. I didn't like it as much as book one. I feel like this one falls a little into that second book syndrome where it was just a lot of fluff. There was a ton of politics, but no action and no like real things were resolved, I felt like. I do still love Mira and her relationships. I think they are realistic and they are complex and they are very layered and they are, those aspects of the story were very well done and I anticipate very high th very good things in the final book but the actual plot line of the story fell a little short for me. So unfortunately it's not my favorite of the series yet, but I have, I have high hopes for our finale. Up next, I have The White Rose by Amy Ewing, which is the second book in the Jewel series, which is a very disturbing dystopian series. <laughs> We're basically following these girls who are trained all their lives to be surrogates for the rich. And they're just sort of discarded once they've, served their purpose. So we follow this girl who has escaped. This is book two. Um, so obviously I can't go into too much detail. I gave this three stars. I do feel like we're falling into that cookie cutter trilogy of YA dystopia. And it, while it's still interesting and I it, it's been a really long time since I've read a new why new this isn't a new book even a little this came out at the height of all the dystopians i'm just finally getting to it it's just it's that cookie cutter aspect of what goes on i ex i'm pretty sure i know exactly what to expect in the last book so it's just it's very predictable while it is dark and twisted i do find it a bit predictable and um in all of the aspects with the magic with the surrogacy and all of that um, which is unfortunate, but I'm still gonna finish the series because I'm curious to see how it wraps up. If there's gonna be a different twist, there was a plot twist at the end of this book. I saw it coming a mile away, which was unfortunate again, but it is what it is. Next, I picked up Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shawna McGuire. This is the second book in the Wayward Children series, which is a very small little novella collection, basically following they don't follow a cohesive plot. They're each their individual stories. I'm just reading them in publication order. And this one we follow Jack and Jill's story from book one. And I loved this world. It was a very vampiresque kind of world. And Jack and Jill, I really like how you actually see how messed up they were before they fell into this really bad world. And that messed them up even further. So a lot of the things that they do and say in book one make so much more sense. They're just, they're super screwed up. And I like that it wasn't just for the fact that they went into this other world and were spit back out. 
I like that depth that was added. Um, these are really short, so I do wish that they were a bit longer. However, as much as I wish they were a bit longer, I think these are the perfect length. They are short to the point. They pack a whole lot of action and punch in just under 200 pages. And that's exactly what I kind of want and now expect from these books. So I'm excited to keep reading with this series because I'm pretty sure there's gonna end up being like 10 of these. I gave this book four stars. Up next, I actually picked up another romance. I picked up Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. And I think that this was really fun. Again, just a really fun, lighthearted, little romance. This one was a baker next to a bar and they had to share a wall and deal with their issues and then they end up falling for each other which was so cute and adorable. The slow burn I feel like was very drawn out. Um, I know at, at each time I hit the 100 page mark I'm like okay I get it. They're both stubborn and broody. Let's do the thing. Come on. There was that. However, when that part did show up within the story, it took off like a freaking rocket. And I loved it. It was really fun to do different bar settings because her bakery was a bar themed bakery. So all her cupcakes were like mimosa cupcakes, mojito cupcakes. She had specials. It made my mouth water and I all I wanted were cupcakes after I read, read this book. So that was a whole thing. But, and then his was an ax throwing bar, which was just so fun. And I've been ax throwing, it's super fun. So I just think this was so fantastic. I think it was a good time. Um, I ended up giving it four stars. And finally, the last book that I ended up reading in the month of April was Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I gave this four stars. It had the exact same issues that I had with book one, which was everything was drawn out. These are such long books, but at the same time, they're really fun. I just think the romance aspect is drawn out. We get so much more history in this book, and I loved that about this world. Um, because the first book, to me, we didn't get enough about the world and how it worked and the different creatures and the different races and the different kingdoms. This, we got it, and we got it in the most hilarious way. And I thought that was really fun. Um, I love Poppy and Hawk. I think they're fantastic. And the introduction of Kiernan is just chef's kiss. I love Kiernan. He's just a hot, he's a hot mess and I love it. One of the things I, I did come prepared for when I started reading this book is I know that the ending of this was very jarring for a lot of people. So I was ready for something to happen at the end of this book. I was not, however, ready for what actually happened at the end of this book. I finished this book at like midnight, 1 a.m. My husband was playing video games and I'm in the next room finishing this book and I think I scared him because I screamed across the house <laughs> because of what happened at the end of this book. So thankfully the third book's out and it's on my TBR for the month of May because I need some goddamn answers to what that was. I just... I have so many questions, just so many questions of what this nonsense is. Like I said, I gave it four stars. I'm loving this series. It's super fun. I'm really sad that I'm almost caught up on it. And those are all the books that I ended up reading in the month of April. Let me know what books you really enjoyed. Um, if you read any duds, um, let me know. I obviously had a relatively slow start to the month of April, which was a bit, it's gonna happen. I expect it to happen. Um, I've accepted that DNFing is a form of self-care, so you should DNF as well as a form of self-care because reading should be fun and you shouldn't drag yourself through books. Um, I definitely wish I had DNFed a couple of the books I read this month, but it is what it is. Um, and that's gonna be it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and I will see you guys in our next video. Bye.